Hello there. Now, when you last saw me, I was building up a breadboard for a power supply for the ESP8266 chip. Uh, here is an 8266 on a breakout board that I ordered some time ago. Uh, I've been told since it's probably not the best breakout board, so I might order a couple of the other different variants later. And I've just attached it to some of these female to male connectors, which are connected in the breadboard as if it was a ditch. And it's a shame to say, but I think none of the breadboard breakouts, or none of these breakouts, have that nice dip chip format, which would be nice really if you could just plunk it straight on and have the dip style format. So what I'm going to do, now I've got a power supply, is in this Amazon box here, I've got what should be a replacement for the serial cable at 3.3 volts that didn't work before. So let's just close up the laptop. I've also looked and there's a GitHub project that adds support for compiling this to the Arduino IDE. There are probably other ways to get compilers for it too. Now, let me just open up the box. So what we've got in here, a 3.3 volt serial. It's a btemcu.cn. There's a DTR, an RXD, a TXD, and there's a five volt supply. So I'm slightly questioning if this really is a three volt version. This might be a five volt version. I might have to check what I've ordered, but that's not a problem because I've got five volt to three volt level shift converters. So I'll test what I'm getting out there. I'll probably have a quick look at how uh, five volt tolerant the uh, TXRX pins are on here. My plan today is just to use simple AT commands to try and get not that LED but another LED because that's going to be the power LED to light just from driving this and maybe to see if I can scan for some local Wi-Fi networks. Again just talking to other people I've heard that you can also set up a local Wi-Fi access point on this so if you're at events and so on you don't have to rely on an event Wi-Fi you can just source it straight from the chip. Okay I'll get this plugged in and I'll see what we can do with it. I have actually just spotted a potential problem with this little board beyond the potential possibility it's actually 5 volt only. This little board has got a USB-A connector stuck right on the end, not a USB-B connector. I was kind of expecting there to be a micro USB or a B connector there. So that means I can plug it into my laptop and they're giving me this uh, pitiful little uh, female to female connector. Um, I'm probably going to want female to male so I can breadboard it up with a couple of other things. I mean I suppose I could connect them straight in with female to female to this. So I'm thinking, well, I need something a bit longer. Now, luckily, in one of the drawers of my robot cupboard, I have a USB hub. It's a very large multi-port truss that I'd originally put on Armbot. I'll tell you more about Armbot later. And a normal USB A to B. Uh, and that at least frees my laptop from having to be that close to the device, which is far too close. So I'll get that connected up. And we'll bring out the multimeter and at least see what we're getting off of this. So I can see we've got a 5 volt connector. Uh, maybe I can go and try and send, I don't know, like a cheeky repeating hello world message across TX and RX. Uh, there's a trick for testing if these things work anyway. Uh, and I'll show you that in just a second. So let's go and connect it up. Now although this is a powered hub, what's quite nice about this hub is even when not powered, it will still do the business. Um, since I'm going to be powering external devices, I should probably give my laptop power as well. And we'll just plug that in there. And then what I'm going to need is I'm going to put a, just a little jumper across TX and RX, which then means that uh, this will echo anything you send to it. So I can set up Putty, uh, which is a standard client for either using SSH or Serial. Use putty just to type hello and see if this is actually working. Right, just got this from the store cupboard. I'll just probably keep it in the, the robot cupboard. It is a jump wire kit, but I've also added a couple of other useful things to it. A couple of simple components. Um, there we go, there's a little standard jumper. I've salvaged these from old motherboards and old computers and so on. So if I take that and go RX and TX here, nothing will blow up and I'll be able to check. Next thing is, is let's just see if my uh, laptop needs any special drivers or has immediately identified that it has a USB device on it. Windows got drivers set up for the device by itself with no problems. It actually discovered it and did all the right things. And as discussed, I've got the jumper across the TX and RX pins. 
So I've got putty here with a 9600 board settings and let's open it up and see what we get. So if I type anything like hello, we get an immediate echo. Now it's jumped to the front of the line there, but that basically depends upon my terminal settings, uh, whether I'm sending line feeds or not from putty back to putty. But it is actually working, we're getting an echo back. The next thing to check is the voltages. So the device I want to work with, the 8266, is supposed to be 3 volts. And if you remember, I was concerned that this was giving out 5 volts. So I'm going to check that this is actually giving 3 volts and not 5 volts on the TX and the RX pins. So if I take my multimeter, put it in the 20 volts DC range, and I'll put this across ground and across RX and 3.4 there, TX 3.4 which is close enough to 3.3 to be not a problem. So that will work and that's not going to blow up the device for me. So I've been online uh, and looked at a number of the documents at the uh, pinout of this, which I brought down into a dip configuration just using these uh, female to male connectors. And I've wired in the positive voltage here to my positive voltage rail, the ground to the ground rail, I've got some TX and RX cables here and according to documents online I need a 3.3k resistor here bringing this up to the positive rail so it's a pull up uh, and then we'll try powering it up and see what we get. Okay, I didn't have any 3k in this standard resistor series. I've got is a 3.3k, four bands, these are the ones that you get from Maplin. Um, I found that those uh, Maplin GCSE kits were handy little uh, top-ups of components. Not if you want something more specific, but if you just need some general bits to tinker with. Box of those in a handy saucer tray, why not? So, just to be sure, I'll take my multimeter, put it in the 20k range, and we should get roughly 3.3k. I mean, if it's 3.3k, well, that's more than roughly. Excellent. Right, so I'll pop that across CH and VCC. We'll take it out of its little belt here, and so I can put a nice bend in there. And let's see, switch back here. So CHPD pulled up. Which one's CHPD? CHPD is the third pin along here. So I'll move this out of the way. So this third pin there. Let's just temporarily disconnect the module's power. Um, actually, I need to probably disconnect the board's power. Put the CHPD part in there. And then maybe we'll see some kind of message from the device. I power up the board here. So, we've still got an LED on there, we don't have anything on the serial, and am I getting anything at all? No, okay, and we want to be at 115200, so we're at the wrong board rate right now, serial, 115200, okay, hello, and we'll just power cycle. We're still not getting a peep from the device yet. So my first question is, have I got TX and RX the wrong way up? Uh, and my answer to that is almost inevitably. Oh, hello. 